everybody. Welcome to the Clinking Club's Wine 101. Um, so, well, I'm going to let a couple people get started on here, so I'm going to pour myself a little vino. I hope you do too. I have a nice Chardonnay here from, I think this one was from Washington. Yeah, Richland, Washington. Um, so yeah, grab yourself a vino. Let me know when you guys get here. Just give me like a, a like. Oh, you can't? Are, is your volume on? Can you guys hear me okay? Melissa said she can't. Can I get... A, yeah? Keith, can you hear me? <laughs> um, so anyways, grab some wine. I'm going to keep talking. Okay, thank you. Grab some wine. Let me know when you're here. Just say cheers or something like that. Um, just quickly before I get started in today's topic... I want to let you guys know about this week a little bit. Um, just going to be some quick videos Monday through Friday. <clears throat> uh, Friday I'll probably do it a little earlier, but Monday through Thursday they'll be at this time 5 o'clock because it's 5 o'clock somewhere and you got to have a glass of wine while you talk wine. Um, so, yeah, so this week I'm going to be covering, you know, just a little bit about wine basics. I'm going to be covering um, appellations, like where, like places where they grow wine, uh, so different regions in the world, so you might get a little geography lesson in addition to some wine lessons. Um, every day I'm going to take a couple grapes to talk about, so today I'm going to talk about the world's two most famous grapes, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and Chardonnay, um, and then throughout the week I'll be covering, um, I say um a lot, I need to stop that, I do too many videos to say um. Uh, okay, good, Melissa. Um, <clears throat> Um, I said it again. <laughs> so every day I'll be covering different grapes in different regions. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. And let's get started. Cheers, everybody. So today <clears throat> we're going to cover what the hell is wine. And basically wine, first of all, grapes are the only fruit that make wine. And it was kind of like God gave us this amazing, precious little bundle of joy called a grape that we can turn into wine because um, it's like so easy and perfect. Basically if you walk into a grocery store and you see that white film on the grape, that's yeast. So when you crush the yeast with the grape and get all the juices going, that creates the fermentation process and, and, and um, yeast eats sugar and turns it into our beloved alcohol which gives people a lot of enjoyment and satisfaction am I right 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 <laughs> um, so basically that's what happens like that's really the wine process they take the grape they mash it up you guys have probably all seen that um, I love Lucy where she's like smashing it with her feet or whatever still dying to do that by the way um, so yeah that's the winemaking process and then basically the winemaker takes the grape and they decide are they going to put it in you know stainless steel are they going to put it in oak how long are you going to age it for um how um uh yeah so that's what happens and the winemaker makes its magic so the there are two kinds well more than two regions but there's two types of wines and they're categorized by the old world and the new world so the old world is europe so spain italy france those kinds of places New World is America, uh, North and South America actually, Australia, New Zealand, um, um, I'm missing one, South Africa, those kind of places. And the main difference is how we name our grapes. So here in America, we name our wine by the name of the grape. So right here I have a Chardonnay. The sun's too weird on that. Anyways, I have a Chardonnay, so we name it Chardonnay. Now in... France, for example, this would be a white burgundy, okay, because they name it after the place, not after the grape. So it's quite interesting. So for example, Bordeaux, I always thought, I love a Bordeaux, it's a nice big full wine, and I always thought that it was a kind of grape, because I'm from California, and we call our wine by what the grape in the wine is, but what they do is they call it by the region. So if you don't know that a Bordeaux has Cabernet Sauvignon, Cab Franc, um, Petit Verdot, Malbec, and I think there's one other, Merlot and Merlot. Um, if you don't know what has it in there, you don't know what's in that bottle. It's funny because like everything needs to be labeled except you really never know what's in your wine bottle. Um, so th that's the main difference between the old world wines and the new world wines. 
And also the old world is very traditional. So like, especially here in California, especially I'm in the central coast right now, they're willing to try new things. They're willing to put stuff in stainless steel uh, and use the screw caps and all that kind of stuff. Um, the people in Europe are a little more old fashioned, like Cabernet, you know, it gets fermented in oak and then it, and then it gets, um, and then it ages in oak as well. Uh, when you're picking wine, so this is something that I've been using a lot and I'm really enjoying it, and it's called the three G's. So uh, you go to a grocery store, you have no idea what to buy. There's so many options. So what do you do? How do you, how do you decide? And first of all, you need to start drinking a lot of wine, sample a lot of wine from a lot of places, from a lot of different vineyards. So we want to do the three G's, which is the, the grape, the ground, and the guy and the gal that makes it. So if you know what the grape is, you're already off to a good start. So I was a huge Pinot Noir drinker. I mean, I still love Pinot Noir. But I was a big Pinot Noir drinker for a really long time. Um, so I know that grape really well. It's a nice light grape. I love that it goes with, you know, light, light dishes as well as heavier dishes. You could eat it with meat. You could eat it with a salad. Um, I'm definitely more of a red wine drinker, even though I'm getting way more into whites as I learn more about them. Um, so anyways, if you know the grape, and then you know the ground, so Napa Valley is a re really great place to grow Pinot Noir. Um, so then you're kind of off to a good start. You're like, okay, I know that grape, and I know Pinot Noir, I mean, I know Napa Valley makes really good Pinot Noirs. And then three, you gotta go the guy or the gal that makes it. So this is what's really interesting to me, and I'll give you an example. There's a Mark West Pinot Noir that I cannot stand. I think it's, I don't know what it is, there's this aftertaste, and I have to actually look into the, their uh, process and see what it is that I don't love about it. But I don't love that grape. And then right next door is Acacia, and I love their Pinot Noir. So that's the same grape, it's basically the same ground, they're in the same area, but the guy or the gal have, have a very different process in making that grape. So the more you drink, the more you know, and like some people even keep a notebook, there's some really cool apps out there now where you can keep track of the wines that you're tasting. Um, but that's a really good thing to start paying attention to. Um, another thing I've noticed is California cabs kind of give me this weird aftertaste. Um, so I love like the old world cabs a lot more, like the ones that I'm tasting from like France and Italy. Um, those are, I'm just enjoying them more. I don't know what it is. There's this aftertaste in California cabs that I get. Um, and everybody's different. Everybody's palate's different. So it's just really fun and interesting to learn. And how do you learn? You just keep drinking and trying and, and paying attention. Really, you got to pay attention to what, what you're putting in your mouth. <laughs> um, what else did I want to say about this? Oh, yeah. The flavor profile that you want to start paying attention to when you are drinking wines you know the whole you gotta smell it and sip it. Like you don't have to be all crazy. Like I'm not like, like I'm not there yet. Like it's not my jam. I'm not snorting it like coke. I'm not. <laughs> Why did I just say that? I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> anyway, I'm not. Um, but you want to start looking for the flavor profile, which is fruit, floral, spices, vegetal, and oak and oil. So you'll get like. Um, like this one, for example, is a Chardonnay that was done in stainless steel, so it's like kind of pineapple-y to me. If it was done in oak, it probably would have been a little bit more buttery, more honey. Uh, so just start paying attention to the flavors that you smell, the flavors that you taste, um, and the ones that you like and dislike. Um, but those are the that's the profile in how you judge the characteristics and explore what you love. Um, okay, I think that's all I have to say about that. Next. We are going to talk about Cabernet Sauvignon. So Cab is one of those, first of all, it's one of the most famous, it is between that and Chardonnay. Those are the two most famous wines in the whole world. I'm sure everybody watching this video has heard of them, probably tried them in many different varieties. Um, definitely one of the most famous wines in the world. It's a nice big wine. It's the big pop of wine. It's in a lot of blends, um, like the Bordeaux blend. It's the main, main grape in the Bordeaux blend. It is full bodied, it's gonna be really jammy, it's um, super fruity, like you're gonna get a lot of blackberry, blueberry, um, uh, those kind of big kind of plum even, uh, those big purple juicy fruits. Um, they grow very easily and they grow everywhere. So they're, it's a really easy grape to grow. There are certain grapes that aren't like Pinot Noir, it's very hard to grow. So this grape's really easy to grow, um, but unless you are doing like big industrial size wines or trying to do some sort of value wine, the winemaker is still gonna lower the yield of the grape. So I found this very interesting. They actually take grapes into clusters and if it grows more than like 28 or so, they'll cut those grapes off. So that's less wine, but it's a higher quality of wine. So you really have to do that with grapes like uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and even Chardonnay because they just run wild. 
In fact, Sauvignon means savage in French. I love that, you know, because it just grows wild. So it's just like this savage grape. Um, like we were talking about with the flavor profiles, you're going to get some vanilla, some toffee, some smoke, um, maybe some uh, cedar. And that's because usually Chardonnay, if it's, I mean, sorry, usually Cabernet, if it's not fermented in oak, it's at least finished in oak. So depending on the winemaker, they might ferment it in stainless steel and then transfer it to oak. Um, and then the old world's probably going to ferment it in oak and age it in oak. And it's one of those grapes that just takes oak really, really well. It's... Um, it's super tannic. I'm going to talk about tannic tannins in one second, but it's super, super tannic. So uh, it's a grape that ages really well, and as it ages, it gets softer. The tannins get softer. So what the fuck's a tannin? A tannin is, have you ever made a cup of, like, black tea? Uh, and, like, not don't put sugar or any creamer or anything in it, it's just, and you kind of get that, like, super dry mouthfeel. That's a tannin. So a wine that is super tannic, it's super dry, it's less sweet. So the more tannic the wine, the drier it is, the sweeter the wine, uh, the sweeter it is. So, and it's going to be a little more wet on the palate. Um, tannins come from the skin of the grape, the seeds of the grape, and the stem. Skin, seeds, stem. Did I say those right? <laughs> uh, so when you're mashing it up or whatever, they leave all that in there, and that's what creates the tannins. And... Um, Usually a Cabernet is blended because it is so big and bold and amazing. And even if you have a bottle where it says Cabernet Sauvignon on the front, it still might be blended. That just means that it's 85% Cab Sauvignon. So it could, Sauvi Cabernet Sauvignon, sorry. Um, that just means it's eight, at least 85% grape, but usually they put a little Merlot in there because Merlot is like its kissing cousin. They're very, very similar, except Merlot's much softer, much lighter, uh, not as full-bodied and jammy. Um, let me just make sure I'm checking my notes and not missing anything. Oh yeah, where is this shit grown? <laughs> like I said, it, it kind of grows grows rampant, so it's it's available in most areas that they that grow wine. The main re regions are California, Washington State, Chile, Italy, Australia. Um, in Italy is where you're going to get the Chianti and the Bordeaux, and the Cabernet Sauvignon is actually a huge, uh, usually the first grape in those blends. So like I said, the old world names it after the region, and us folks over here in the new world name it after the grape. So that is Cabernet Sauvignon Blanc. Any questions so far? Hi, Becky. Just gonna, hi, Mary. Hi, Steve. Um, I think we're okay so far. Okay, I'm gonna move on. We're gonna talk about Chardonnay. I had the most amazing aunt on the planet, my great aunt, Vivi. She was so fabulous. In fact, you know, she made it to her late 80s and she died on a first date. She was on a first date. She started to have a heart attack and she was drinking her Chardonnay and she asked for more Chardonnay while she was like waiting for the ambulance to get there. Um, anyways, that's how I want to die. She was like living it up to the end. And here's to my Aunt Vivi right here. Cheers and my Chardonnay. So this grape is really interesting to me for many, many years. I did not think I liked it because um, I didn't try enough. Because I wasn't sampling enough and I wasn't trying enough from different vineyards. How do you learn a lot about wine? You drink a lot of wine. <laughs> so stop buying the same wine you've been buying for the last 10 years and branch out a little bit, guys. Um, but anyways, I'm, and actually now that I am learning a little bit more and growing a little bit more, my palate is changing a little bit and I'm actually starting to like the Chardonnays I didn't used to like, but let's just talk about it first. Um, so she, so um, the big buttery oaky Chardonnays I don't love. They're really thick in the mouth. They're kind of heavy. Um, you're probably going to taste a little bit of honey. I always get a little bit of a honey flavor on those. And those are really good. Like if you have like a lobster dinner and you're just like drenching that shit in butter, like have yourself a nice buttery Chardonnay. That would go like so well together. Um, but I just recently found out, especially like this one, for example, is done in stainless steel. So you'll see on certain Chardonnays it says unoaked. That means it's done in stainless steel. And then they're actually lighter. They're a little more crisp. Like I don't know if you guys drink Chardonnay, but this is not a thick, typical Chardonnay. Um, it's almost pineapple-y, so uh, it almost has like a more of a sweetness to it versus like a buttery thickness to it. Uh, this one would be like super good with like french fries and mussels or something like that. Um, it is one of the most popular 
grapes in the entire world and probably that reason is because it's one of the highest in alcohol content and you know how much enjoyment that brings to people. <laughs> um, so I think it gets up to like 13, 14% and so that's a big reason people um, got into the Chardonnay. Chardonnay was super popular in the 80s and um, you know wines kind of go in and out. I know Pinot Noir was super popular after Sideways came out and everyone was like I can't drink Merlot. Um, now Rosé is super popular right now so wines go in and out of popularity popularity but just like you know I don't wear skinny jeans because I have caps for days like drink the one that you like who cares about what the fads and the trends are right um so Chardonnay is really easy to understand like I said if it's gonna be in oak it's gonna be oaky and buttery if it's gonna be in stainless steel it's gonna be um, you know pineapple -y, fruity like tutti fruity ish and um, just like the Sauvignon Blanc, it grows pretty much anywhere. So unless, like I said, if they're making value wines, that's amazing because you'll get tons per acre of the grape. So it makes really great value wines, but it also has some really nice expensive wines and that's when they're, you know, making that yield smaller and they're, you know, trimming the grapes and getting the, croup, the, the clumps of grapes smaller. So you get like more, um, just all the nutrients, all the juices. It's just like a deeper, more complex, um, plumper, juicier, more delicious grape. Uh, so that's going to be for more of your expensive wines, uh, for your more, I'll say, quality wines and quality winemakers. Um, Chardonnay is one of the only grapes that is rarely blended. You can blend it, but it does not need to be blended. Unlike Cabernet, where it's super, super heavy, so it's really uh, quite often that you'll see either one or two more grapes blended with it because it's so tannic and full-bodied and heavy. Chardonnay is one of those grapes that is just like, hey, I'm good on my own. I don't need nobody. Um, yeah, so I think that's kind of all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to be, you know, covering some different topics, different grapes, different regions for the next uh, five days. And uh, yeah, like I said, drink a lot of wine, explore. I would love to hear if you actually want to hear about something. So please, you know, let me know if there's something that you would actually like me to cover. I'd be happy to. And yeah, cheers everybody. Have a wonderful Monday and I will see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here.